153 global leaders have penned a letter to President Biden with one clear message, quote, you can be remembered as the climate president. It's a moment these leaders say must be seen as when the world was saved. Well, here to discuss is the executive director of that project that put this letter together, Lori Lotus of Climate Power. Lori, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, the letter literally hands Biden a list of leaders who support climate action from former presidents to CEOs and celebrities. He, of course, rejoined the Paris Agreement on day one. What is Climate Power, though, hoping to see next? Well, I think what we know is that the science is unforgiving, right? And mounting evidence suggests there needs to be significant action from all parties, right? This is really going to be a worldwide effort that requires governments, businesses, individuals, um, everyone to really step up and do what we can to avoid the worst consequences of the climate crisis. And so what we really think that needs to happen and what the letter was really talking about was that we need President Biden to be as bold as the ambition that he has laid out. And what we've seen in the first couple of weeks of his presidency is he is doing exactly what he needs to do to get things on the right track. But it's going to take more than executive actions from President Biden. We are going to need congressional action, um, and we're going to need it very quickly. We have this narrow window, and we need to take action immediately to get people back to work to create the type of um, incentives and uh, for businesses to to do the research and to right. take the steps they need to um, to really turn this around. Lori, I'm, I'm wondering what the relationship is between uh, the private sector and, and the government when it comes to this, because you do have a really interesting background. You've worked on presidential campaigns in the past. Uh, you've also worked at Apple. So I, I'm wondering about the <laughs> private sector and, and what role the private sector has to push the government in, in the direction that you believe is the right direction. Right, so what you're seeing, you've seen a lot of businesses set out their commitments, right? They've said net zero emissions and given a date. Um, and that's great because as you know, businesses are one of the largest producers of the greenhouse emissions that are really fueling the climate crisis. But what we need for businesses to do is to not only make the commitments but to act on them and then also talk to their elected officials, talk to their senators about the importance of taking action quickly, right? This needs to be one businesses, one of their top three lobbying priorities. And right now I think it's probably, you know, gets pushed lower, obviously for reasons um, of, for each company's sort of uh, business um, uh, impetus. But I think that's what we're going to need to see change is businesses taking more active role in what this future sh should look like. What was the process in, in, in getting these names on the list? You have former governor of California, Jerry Brown, Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, Jane Fonda, um, former president of Ireland, Mary Robinson. Uh, how did you do it? It's an incredible list of people. And we are very uh, grateful that everyone um, signed on, honestly. It didn't take much hmm. because there is such a desire from these leaders to do something and wanting to have their voices heard. And they're coming from a new, unique place of power where people do listen to them. And so, like you said, we have leaders uh, like Christiana Figueres, who was such a champion for this effort and really helped us every step of the way um, to Jeff Bezos. Um, and so there is a, you know, a wide range of people and I think what they're doing is saying to President Biden, we know you want to do everything uh, that you can to stop this crisis and we have your back. Um, and we are, you know, we're right alongside you in pushing for the type of action we need to have happen. Okay, so take us through the economics of this. Uh, as you uh, write in the letter, it, 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 you highlight how Biden has said, quote, when I hear the words climate change, I hear jobs. Give us some numbers and, and how these jobs would be created uh, when it comes to thinking more about the environment. Sure, so Moody's put out an analysis of Biden's Build Back Better plan, right? And that was his, um, the agenda he set forth during his campaign of how do we, how do we build the sort of economic recovery we need from the COVID pandemic and what that should really look like. And at the heart of that was taking action on climate, was in making these sort of investments in clean energy. Um, Moody said that that would create 18.6 million jobs. Now, these are the jobs that you would think of of the future, 
you know, the investors and the inventors and the researchers, but they're also jobs that people have the skills to do right now. They're the brick masons and the builders and the roofers and the truck drivers. And so what we need is a huge investment in the American people that to get them back to work and to invest in the renewable um, energy sources like client, or like wind and like solar, um, and that can get people to work right now. Executive Director of Climate Power 2020, Lori Lotus. Lori, thanks so much for your time. Really great to, to have you join us on Quick Take this morning. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.